From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, we perform an autopsy and issue a treatment plan for Florida State basketball to hopefully get back on track. And the Asante Samuel All-Stars. I'll try to explain. Wake Up War Champ presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. CPTallyBar.com, the website. 2475 Appalachia Parkway, physical address. If you got your phone out and you're putting on your GPS, you can also hit the QR code on your screen. Or QR code on your screen, rather. That'll take you right to the website and check out the daily lunch specials. It's Friday, though. You already know what's going down. Chicken strip basket. Ham breaded. Sauce on the side. Or... Tossed in that sauce of your choosing. Eight ninety nine side dish of your choosing as well comes with that for only eight ninety nine from eleven a.m. to three p.m. today. So go take advantage over the corner pocket bar and grill. Live music this weekend, Corey. We think I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Yeah. Don't know for sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Yeah, man. Uh, corner pocket bar and grill, everybody. We love it. Warchant.com, ultimate level sports source. Five star rating and review on the podcast side. Subscribe to the actual website, get all the information that's behind the, the paywall. All the good stuff resides behind there. And uh, thumbs up on YouTube. Subscribe to YouTube. That one free of charge. Pretty decent video content as well. Pretty good video department we got over at Warchant.com as well. Corey Clark, um, fresh off a doubleheader with his, his son yesterday. I, I'm going to assume as we talk about this that we're projecting into the future that you you, you hunker down for two full nine-inning games uh, with your beloved son, so back on well, the seven good side innings. Of things. Seven? They're, only, they're only seven in high school, okay. and I think you were recording this in all transparency before the games were played. I'm going to go ahead and assume that I stayed for both, yes. because even if he doesn't play in the second game, I think it's only a five inning game. All right. All so right. there we go. It's not not too bad. Twelve innings of JV baseball, man. You, nothing's better. Nothing is better than twelve innings of JV baseball. <laughs> Love it. Um, you know, I don't know. I think I'd rather watch 12 innings of JV baseball than have to watch uh, 40 more minutes of, of the way that Florida State played on Thursday uh, in their season finale. Well, we'll see if they take an NIT bid, uh, but they fall to North Carolina 92 to 67. And as every bit rough and painful as that final score indicated there, Corey, you like to point out rebound discrepancy 48 to 22. Yeah. the discrepancy this time around and you know starting to watch a little bit more basketball around this time of year you know you, you see some shots get you know so many three pointers are being taken that you know it's hard to really box out and judge where the rebounds are going to be on those wildly you know contested taken shots but man like when you pointed out in the group text like I, I kind of hunkered down like the last nine minutes of that game and yeah it was just it was getting out physical that was getting out hustled Kind of the gross stuff that that didn't thankfully mark what this season was all about, but ended up rearing its head at the worst possible time on Thursday. Yeah, it's weird. The season's over, so I think we can take a uh, you know a ten thousand foot view of the uh, of the seat of the program as a whole and this team as a whole. Um, you know, look on the one hand. They were significantly better than they were a season ago. I mean, there's no doubt. Obviously, they won nine games last year. Uh, they got blown out. They got blown out like this in almost every loss uh, last year. Um, so they did show more fight. They were better. Uh, again, they almost doubled their win total, which is, a, you know, that's encouraging to a point. Um, but so, so yes, on that side, it is it is good that they, they improved. They weren't uh, a debacle again. They weren't just laughably bad. But there's some stuff within the program still that just makes you shake your head. Like, I, you know, getting out-rebounded 48-22 to 22 is an embarrassment. What's going on? I know they have a weight room. I've seen it, folks. I've seen it. It's not a palace. It's not a gold's gym. Or an Orange Theory. I, well, Orange Theory doesn't really have. I, I'm trying to think of sponsors for Ward Chant. But, um, but yeah, it's not a goals, but they have weights. I've seen them. Why do they get bullied by almost everybody they see? Why? Why they had, they they had 20 rebounds as a team. There were two that were out. There were team rebounds because they got knocked out of bounds by North Carolina. They gave up 48 rebounds, man. That, that's that's crazy. Out of the 68 rebounds available. 
the other team got more than two thirds of them. Like what? And and I know North Carolina is very good. I get it. Baycott's thirty six years old. He's been there forever. He came in with Rashid and and uh, who was that? Rashid and Stackhouse. But but man, like it's that's what's discour- That's what gives me pause going into next year. Look, I don't think there's going to be a change made. Um, I think there needs to be a plan in place for a change to be made, but I don't think it's going to come now. I would like Leonard. Um, I, look, in, all, in a perfect world, I would like him to announce that, I mean, not just because the program has plateaued, but also he's in his mid-70s. I mean, he's got a presidential run to gear up for mm-hmm. in four years. Right. Um, so, but like, you know, I, I, I'd like him, I'd like there to be a plan in place so you know that the future of the program is being um, focused on. Because I don't want Leonard to be fired. I don't think any. I, I hope most people listening to this show don't want Leonard to be fired. He's a very good man and has done a lot of great things for Florida State basketball. And quite frankly, personally, he's a really good. He's been great with me. Um, and I know that's not supposed to, um, you know. It's not Corey. Be a professional. It's not. I. Yeah. I'm kidding. But, but you're a human on. being. Though. I get right. It. No, exactly. He's awesome. It's, he's a great dude. He is. Yes. It's yes. not supposed to shroud my judgment, but it no. does in a sense that I just genuinely like that person. I can tell you this though: if they had gone nine and twenty-eight again, or whatever they did last year, nine and twenty-five, I'd be on here saying this is pointless. Yeah. You got to go in a new direction. They did show enough improvement, but um, and they got a nice win against Virginia Tech, and they finished with a winning record. I mean, all these things you can we can you know, kind of roll our eyes at, but considering where they were last year, those were positive steps. But you look at this team and it's like, okay, is Baba ever going to become a thing? No. It's been a year and a half now. Like I've seen a lot of really good players that get really good in a year and a half. I don't know what Baba did on, uh, let's see what Baba did on uh, on Thursday. Two for five, turnovers. seven points, four rebounds, four seven turnovers. Seven points, four rebounds, four turnovers, three fouls, one steal, one block. In 27 minutes, he was a minus 20. I mean, they were all they all had horrible uh, plus-minus numbers. But, yeah, I mean, you know, four rebounds in 28 minutes or 27 minutes. Cam Cameron, uh, uh, yeah, Cam Corrin had two rebounds in 28 minutes. Like, these are your big guys. Where is the where is the heft? Where is the rebounding? So I looked it up, Aslan, as we were starting the show. They were 302nd in the country <laughs> in rebounding margin oh, coming into the game. Coming into the game. Yeah. I'm having to imagine that getting out-rebounded by 26 is going to plummet them even further down the list when the, when the final season is over. And that's just – that can't be. You can't – because part of that is physicality. Like the, maybe it's part of that is just talent. Uh, part of that is toughness and want to. And where is it? Rebounding is a lot. I think, I don't know, I think rebounding is a lot about just toughness and want to. And who on that team, other than Jameer Watkins, really wants to rebound? Like, that should be embarrassing for those big guys. Jameer Watson is the leading rebounder for the season. Watkins. Watkins, yeah. What did I say? You said Watson the second time, but you said oh, Watkins sorry. the first Watkins. time. You're fine. Is, uh, you know, that's kind of embarrassing, right? Yes. The swing guy, 6'6 six, six swing guy is your leading rebound. I mean, I know he's your best athlete probably. He's certainly your best player, but golly. Um, and the defense has been abysmal all year. I mean, they, they, they were 260th in the nation in field goal percentage defense. They're about the same in scoring defense. Again, they played a faster pace, so the, score, the points per game don't bother me as much as the field goal percentage defense. But, you know, they give up. They're 260th in the nation, and then they let North Carolina shoot 53% in this game. Um, they had a nice second half against Virginia Tech after allowing them to shoot 64% in the first half. They only shot like 33 or 34 in the second half. But look, fundamentally, the program um, has always been built on toughness and defense. Size too, right? Mm. But toughness and defense. Well, they have the size. They don't appear to have any toughness in the interior anyway, and any defense. And I would, assuming they're both still with the team next year, which is a big assumption these days, Baba Miller's not allowed to leave the weight room (laughs) until he can bench press more than I can. And I know he's got those long arms, right? Like you say, those levers, it's tough. I get it. He needs to be significantly stronger next year, like exceedingly stronger. And Jalen Worley should not be allowed back on the team until he can knock down 10 threes in a row. Just just by himself in a gym. I want to see that. He is a good free throw shooter-ish. He's 73% or something, 72%. You can't have a starting point guard 
in 2024 that that not only cannot shoot threes but will not shoot threes because it bogs down the offense. You pass to the guy that's open, which is Worley, wide open in the corner, wide open at the top of the key, but he's the point guard in the country that can't shoot, so he doesn't shoot, and it just it, it makes the whole thing off balance. I don't know, man. I don't know. I got a lot of things to say. I think the big thing is I don't think Leonard. I don't think Leonard is going anywhere after this season. Um, I think he is. I you know I know people might not agree with this, but considering the where we are in, in college athletics and how important college ba- men's college basketball is now, which is not very. Um, I think he is. He he could. He deserves. Is owed one more year. But I want it to be a year where, number one, um, you have to have a plan in place for a successor. You just have to. You have to start thinking about it. He's the, He can't coach forever. He's 75 years old, man, or 76. And it's not going to be anyone on the, former, on the current staff because you don't hire from within when you miss the tournament three years in a row. So you've got to have a plan in place to replace him. And uh, I would also, I, you know, if I'm Michael Offord, I'd be like, look, you know, we, we, we do want people to come to these games. You know, I don't, I don't know if you have a mandate. You don't tell Leonard how to run his program, but you, you have to say, look, give me get some shooters on this team and figure out a way to rebound. Figure out a way to get – there. there's rebounders all over the country, Aslan. Mm. Go to the Mountain West, which is actually a, a very good conference, but go to the Mountain West or go to just the two New Mexico schools. <laughs> New Mexico and New Mexico State, go get their best rebounder. There's no way they're getting paid a lot of money. They ain't getting rising spear money in uh, Los Alamos. Where's Las New Mexico? Cruces? Las Cruces. Los Alamos is where the uh, where the Trinity where they where they built the bomb. Hmm. So uh, different different cities. Um, but yeah, same go, spirit though. Same, same spirit. spirit. Go get somebody that can rebound. I mean, that's so disheartening. Even when you play good defense, which isn't often, you don't you can't get the board half the time. And it's and a lot of that is just toughness and will. And, I, you know, Baba has to take a, a big step. And then, look, you've got to add by subtracting. I'm not going to be a jerk. I'm not going to call out names. Half of this roster doesn't need to be on an ACC roster. Hmm. And I'll leave it at that. You know, the, the question about, and unless I'm not advocating for Leonard to leave, I think, you know, they've done enough this year, as you've pointed out, to, to stretch it out at least one more year. I don't think they need to necessarily make it public that it's going to be his last year, but that needs to be an understanding between he and Michael Alford, and they need to work on a, a succession plan behind closed doors. I, I'm not all, all for, like, if, if he wants to do a, a victory lap or, like, a farewell tour, that's cool, but I'm, I'm not going to mandate it. But was it this year, isn't this par for Leonard Hamilton in Tallahassee, what they did this year? I mean, they might get an NIT bid. I mean, if you look at what he's done at Florida State ever since he got here 22 years ago or whatever, I mean, when you even it all out, this is kind of what they've always been. Um, so, you know. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's fair. I, I think, though, if you look, I mean, considering where they were, right, before COVID, yeah. that's where it, like, they. we've seen the mountaintop now. Mm. So we know what this program can reach or could reach pre-NIL, pre-portal. Uh, um, so that, you know, he is kind of a victim of his own success there. Like, yeah, man, 17 and 16, when, you know, before COVID, you were, I think you were 26 and 5, and you were going to be a two seed in the NCAA tournament, and now you're missing the NCAA tournament for a third year in a row. Uh, yeah, that's not great. Um, so I, I, you know, I think he's, he's not judged against his whole tenure because there have been some clunkers. Uh, he's judged against, uh, what was happening before, this three-year uh, poopy stretch <laughs> happened. By the way, so I'm looking. So you got Enrique Freeman at Akron. Oh, he's a senior. Oh, the, all these guys are seniors. Well, it might all be right, super here. senior. Might have one more year. Frank Mitchell at Canisius, six eight forward. He's a junior. Averaged eleven point six rebounds per game. Strong. Drew Sissy, Sisse, C I S S E, Western Illinois, eleven rebounds per game. Okay. There you go. There you go. And then there's Over. a kid at Long Beach State and, and a kid at UAB that both average double figures and rebounds, and they're both juniors. Go get one of them. Go get somebody that his whole focus in life, the only thing he wants to do in life, not just on a basketball court, but just in life, is to go grab rebounds. That's all he wants to do. Go get somebody like that. God, that would be great. 
And we, also, you know, go find some shooters. That's what I wanted to pivot to right there. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the general consensus on Primo Spears, but there was a few moments in that game on Thursday where, you know, the, the game is over and he's just playing hero ball by himself. And, I, you know, hey, it's, you know, you're down by 20, whatever. What's the worst that could possibly happen? I bring him back if I can bring some shooters so there's some better spacing. So he's got, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to play that actual brand of, of basketball, but maybe there'll be some more space where he actually can get to the rim and he doesn't have to rely on these pull-ups from 15 feet that are contested, or is it best to do the Caleb Mills thing and shake some hands and just wish you luck on your next uh, place? Because Look, I, I, don't, think I don't know if Primo Spears or Baba Miller is the biggest, like, if you can get better next year, this team takes another step than where they were this past year. I, I think Primo is absolutely just what he is. He's gonna He's a gunner. He's a guy that can score a lot or be awful. Um, he he, he kind of ebbs and flows that way. But I don't think I don't think he's he's been an, uh, a huge issue. Like he he has helped them win some games. He's hit some big shots. He is a guy that you know can go get a shot whenever you need one, as opposed to horrible shots that sometimes get taken. They look horrible when he's doing them. He can't shoot from three, which is insane. But from seventeen and sixteen feet, he's he's pretty good. And he can get a shot off against anyone. And that's good to have when you're trying to stop a run or when you're late in the game. I, I, but I, I don't think he's a starter. I think he's a guy you bring off the bench. He reminds me a lot of going back, Lord, 12 years ago now, but Ian Miller. Mm. Like, Ian Miller never was a star at Florida State, but he had star-level games where he came in and just, you know, took over. And Primo can do that, but you got to live with the bad of Primo. But if, he, if he's not in a starting role, if he's willing to accept – coming off the bench um you know I think I think there's a place for him because he is a guy that can go get points by the way just looked it up Chaz Lanier mm. our man Chaz Lanier in North Florida who they play Florida State every year he's 6'4 so he's not tiny he shot 44 percent from three this year he made 103 uh, I'm sorry 106 three-pointers he was 106 out of 241 in 32 games so he averaged like four and a half threes per game. Go get him. <laughs> I he's right down there. Where's North Florida? Isn't that in uh, Saint Augie? That's Augie Doggy, right? No, you and have that's Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah, he's in Jacksonville. What Even am I closer. thinking? Of? Flagler. Yeah, um, yeah man. In. Yeah, Flagler. You nailed it. Yeah. So go. I mean, just go find somebody that can shoot. That's all. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Just go. go. And he would be a. He's a junior, so he's got one year left. Um, you're losing Darren Green. So go the 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 number one shooter in the country is also a junior, but he's from Dayton, and I don't know that he would leave Dayton for Florida State. Kid from Fairfield, maybe I don't know Belmont, right. but yeah, I I look shooting in this day and age in 2024, you can't get by. And 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 be a good team. You can win some games because you'll get hot every now and then, but consistently, if you're a bad shooting team in the year 2024, you are not going to be a good team. And if you can't rebound at all, you've got no chance. To be a to be an NCAA tournament team, so those two things are they're big issues, man. And look, there's going to be a lot of self reflection. I hope within that coaching staff and some schemes that they run, particularly on defense, um, where they just get they get shredded by scheme and also by the personnel they're trying to run that scheme with. I think um, I would like to see some changes there. I would almost if I'm <laughs> If I'm in charge of the Florida State Athletic Department, I would almost mandate that. Like, I, you're not switching one through five anymore, Leonard. <laughs> you're going to hedge it at least. You're going to blitz it. You can't keep doing this. Cam Corin and Baba Miller can't do this. So quit making them. But anyway, that's probably not something offered. That's probably not something he would he would uh, suggest. But I, I might if I was running the athletic department. But, yeah, I would. Uh, I, I think that you've got to get rid – you know, I don't want to say it rudely, but I will. You've got to get some of these guys off your roster and replace them with guys that can actually play at this level. Yeah. And we texted about it last night. I think it was last night, yesterday. The Josh Nickelberry thing mm -hmm. is the most I, – I want you guys to know, because he made a jumper finally in the game when they were down by 30 on Thursday. That guy shot – I think I, well, I texted you. I can't remember what it, he made. Seventy nine threes a season ago at LaSalle. He had a game against Wake where he scored twenty six points. He scored over twenty points four times. He made seventy nine threes. He shot almost forty percent from three. He had eight games where he made at least four. 
He had three games where he made five or more. The whole season at Florida State this year, he was 13 of 50 from three. Yeah. I, I You know, who knows? I, I don't know how that happens, how you go from being a really good shooter. Billis was talking him up during the broadcast. Like, Nickelberry can really shoot. He hadn't had the best shooting year this year, he said. And it's like, yeah, we know. But 13 out of 50, and apparently doesn't do anything else well enough to be on the court. You know, I think there's decision to be made there. I think there's a decision of point guard to be made. Um, and and clearly there's a decision with some uh, some front court guys. There's a lot of decisions. I, I You know, I, I think there will be some serious turnover. I think there needs to be. And I also think Jameer Watkins, hopefully he stays, is a – potential all ACC first team guy. I think he was great for most of the year. Um, and I he's somebody to build around. I don't know who else you build around. I think Worley gives you some stuff, but Jameer Watkins is absolutely somebody you can build around. Nobody else you feel really all that great about. Mm. Well, I feel great because I've got vitamin energy mood plus coursing through the veins to get about the, uh, the under eight timeout in the first half. Um, and that carried me throughout my day into the gym and then into the recording of this podcast. You too can take vitamin energy by going to vitaminergy.com using the promo code WordChamp BOGO, WordChamp B-O-G-O. You can buy one item, which is a box, 12 of these things, and get another box, 12 of them, for free. You can get a variety pack if you don't know exactly which part of your life you want to enhance, which is fine, you know. Or maybe you already dialed in, you know that you want your mood to be a little bit improved or your focus to be a little bit more enhanced or you want your workouts to have a little bit better pump. They got one of those, all the varieties, different flavors, can't go wrong. 260 milligrams, all natural caffeine, clinically tested, clinically proven, seven hours of energy. Minimum, take a full one, seven hours, crazy. VitaminEnergy.com, promo code Corey. Or Champ Bogo. Energy with benefits, shake it and take it. Real back uh, quickly to, to Jameer Watkins here. Um, I, I was going to start like a, the gasoline all-stars team which is like when things go wrong, like a player that just exacerbates everything, but that's mean-spirited. So I uh, figured I'd, I'd pivot to a bright side approach since I had my vitamin G mood. Like the Asante Samuel All-Stars, mm. like really good players on unfortunately not great Florida State teams. I think like Asante in 2020 might be the poster child or who's like your first teamer. Yeah. Because is Jameer Watkins, the, and, and listen, this basketball team was not nearly as unsuccessful uh, as the 2020 football team. But can you remember a team maybe, I don't know, even that really underachieved, but just a player that was really solid that on, on a team that unfortunately didn't have enough pieces around him to really uh, appreciate his true greatness maybe as much as Jameer did. Any other – reach back to the recesses of your mind, Encyclopedia Clark. Yeah, I would think when it comes to basketball, the, the first two names that come up to me are – uh, Tim Pickett and Al Thornton. Neither one of those guys, I think, ever played in the NCAA tournament. Mm. Al Thornton was great uh, his last year at Florida. Really, his last two years, but he was exceptional his last year. I don't think he was ACC Player of the Year, but he should have been. Um, but that's a guy. And there was a similar team. Like They had a, they were a better team than this one, uh, and they got really hurt that Tony Douglas broke his hand and missed like two or three weeks or maybe a month, and they went on a – bad losing streak after that happened. But I would say Al Thornton and then Tim Pickett too. Like Tim yeah, Pickett yeah. was a guy that was exciting to watch, played so hard on both ends of the court. And then he would throw up some crazy – he had some primo in him, but he could get going where he was just literally unguardable. Like he's a guy that – it doesn't matter. He's going to make a three over three people. He's just one of those dudes, just a natural-born scorer. Um, so I would say those two more than Jameer. But this is a – I mean, this is a, a top-notch season for a Florida State player to, to average. I think he's averaged close to 16, maybe ended at 16. I don't know what the 34 on on Wednesday did to his average, but I assume he's he's close to 16 points per game. He led him in rebounds. I assume he led him in steals. He certainly led him in free throw attempts. Um, he's great at drawing fouls. Uh, you, you know, I, it, I, to lead your team in points, rebounds, and steals isn't normal. Um, and I, you know, again, he played on a team that wasn't very good and he always kind of gave a lot of effort. He fouls too much. He's got to curb that. But if he comes back again, that guy, I just, you know, so sometimes it's a good point because sometimes seasons like this, that get lost when the overall team season is a disappointment. Um, but I hope his isn't because he had a, he, he was a, he played hard. He showed up, played every game. Um, and was your best player, and I think one of probably the 10 or 12 best players in the conference 
all season long. That's a, that was a great signing. We talked about Nickelberry. Um, Primo was Primo. Watkins was a great transfer. Yes. Um, I don't know what their record would have been without him. If he Ooh. hadn't have shown up, I you know they might have had another nine win season. Uh, he was he was fantastic. So yeah, it's, I'm glad you shouted him out. 2009 Patrick Robinson, not not a great defense, okay. really yeah. solid cornerback. Ended up having pretty good uh, stint there in the NFL. Uh, more recent Parker Messick back in 2022. Like that team just got absolutely annihilated in the Auburn regional. What about Cam Akers? In Willie's last yeah. year. Yeah. I mean, he was – didn't he rush? He ran for like 1,200 yards on a terrible team, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they that was the one that didn't make the bowl. Maybe they, they did. They did, the yeah. Bowl. 2019 yeah. made it. But, yeah, he, he opted out, which, you know, was the right thing to do. Sure. Um, so, but he did play that season, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Kendall, Kendall figured some stuff out with him. Yeah. So, that was – I mean, Cam Akers is a, is a good one. Um, yeah. I mean, again, I don't know what kind of NBA prospect Watkins is because he's, he's not a good shooter. Uh, for their needs at a, as a wing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think if he comes back, Primo comes back, Jalen Worley comes back, Baba comes back, and they're all improved, especially maybe – look, Primo is what he is. If all the other three guys get better, um, that you, you have a nice core, but you've got to surround them with better stuff, man. You know, you just got to. Uh, I, I think Cam Corin could be a very uh, – can be a solid college basketball player you are crushing his spirit and his soul by making him guard point guards. And he gets exposed and exploited and can barely stay on the floor. If they can figure out a way, because I think he's a nice offensive player. He's not good defensively, but I don't think he'd be good defensively in a normal system, but this one he just gets exposed. Um, and I I'd like, I, I, I don't want to give up on him, but it's almost like, it's like, remember McLeod, Naheem McLeod? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like they, you know, same thing. Like, you he would get exposed every game because he's seven four trying to guard five eleven point guards that he just can't. Um, and Cam Corn isn't the fastest guy in the world. Jalen Ganey, God bless him, tried his hardest, can barely walk. Like I think is going to have surgery after the season. Like he has to have another one. Um, he was he was you know he missed all of his first year and then basically was on one leg all of this year. But he played. He went out there and played hard and tried. So credit to him, but, you know, he had to try to guard point guards too. So um, either get some people in here that are better at that. Go find you another Bernard James, man. Those mm. those were fun. That was awesome. Go, go get you somebody that can move laterally and is long. Um, Bob is okay at it. Um, but, yeah, go get somebody like that or figure something else out because your defense, at some point you're going to look at your defense and be like, yeah, we're not any good. We get We get smoked. By every good team we play, by their offense, you, they win some games. But every offense exploits that defense. They, the talent is too much, and the shooting, it, just in college basketball in general, is too much. So you've got to figure out a way to get better on defense. I think scheme is a big reason of it. But if Leonard's going to go out doing what he always does, switching one through five, you know, go get better players that can do that. Then and Cam Corn sadly is tough. It's hard for him to play defense in a in a scheme like that. On Wednesday, Corey, uh, college football playoff folk, uh, the schools actually rather, um, that in, or part of this whatever power five that it used to be or whatever, they went ahead and agreed to the whole 58 to 32 distribution of revenue. Nice. So the SEC and Big Ten are, are going to get 58% of the revenue from the college football playoff. I think the ACC gets, what, 17? I mean, is that the – is that the – what, is, it, is the Big 12 is going to get more than us? No, I think what I saw was the ACC gets uh, 2% more than the Big 12. All right. Well, then at that point. Well, there's not... also a group of five and independents. So yeah, but they, they split, they up split that way. 10. So it's 58-32, the power four. Yeah, so it's 17 it. and 15. Okay. So ACC gets 17. Nice. Uh, Attaboy, Jim Phillips. Attaboy, Suck Jim Phillips. Yeah. What, what's everybody's deal with Jim Phillips? I don't He's know. He's raining in the cash. You should have problems with the Big 12 commissioner. Yeah. Uh, $1.3 billion. The new contract with ESPN is expected to be worth uh, starting in 2026. Uh, I mean, I guess the fact that they went ahead and they had no leverage, I assume, Correct. we assume here, right, to ask for more at this point. Um, I mean, f but golly, 16% more? Um, not great. No, 26% more, Aslan. Yeah. So uh, just the rich keep getting richer, man. Just Is this... I, 
would this make you any more upset if you're on the Florida State Board of Trustees, or is this all just par for the course at this point? I mean, I guess, but it's kind of it's kind of what you expected. Of course, you'd be upset. I mean, you're supposed to be on equal footing, and we all know that's not true. But when it comes to the college football playoff, theoretically, every conference is supposed to have the same chance to succeed and go win, and yet you're uh, you're bucking out the dollars differently to two conferences than you than you are the other ones. But I mean, I you know, I whatever, man. Well, I guess it's like whatever. Like, okay, again, Purdue. I'm going to use them again. No, no, no. Noiler. No, I'm going to use Purdue. Indiana. Uh, yeah, sorry, Indiana, and Minnesota are going to get you know whatever whatever the math comes out. A hundred million dollars more during for the length of the contract in Florida State for a football playoff contract. Think about that. Think about the absurdity of that. Mm. But it is where we are. So yes, of course you're upset. It's another. It's another, uh, you know, reason to want to get out of the ACC because it's ridiculous that all of these also ran or never were football programs. And their Big Ten and SEC are both littered with them. They're, it's not all Georgia and Alabama. They're littered with programs that have never mattered are going to be making this kind of money per year, more than your school, that has mattered for four decades now, four and a half decades. Um so, yeah, whatever. It is It is what it is. But uh, so, yeah, it's just uh, I, I would think I, it's crazy to just agree to that when you're supposed to be on the equal footing that, like, uh, we're, we're all supposed to have the same chance to win a championship, but these two conferences get more than half of all the money. That's That just seems – again, it's like it's like the NFC South and the NFC Central making more than the AFC West. It's crazy. It's just crazy, but this whole sport is crazy. So what are you going to do? By the way, did you see what Sankey is now trying to do with the NCAA tournament? Oh, the basketball one? Yeah. Men's? No. What? 96? So, is he pushing for 96? No. Uh, hold on. I got. I shouldn't have said that and then not, don't have the quote right in front of me. I'm gonna. Oh, here it is. In a recent phone interview with our man uh, Pete Thamel, who I can't follow so I can't read his stories, he talked about the NCAA tournament, just the NCAA tournament, not playoffs, not, not football. Now we've moved on to basketball, folks. And he says, nothing remains static. I think we have to think about the dynamics around Division One in the tournament. And then he brings up how UCLA went from the first four to the final four and that Syracuse did too. And he goes, that just tells you that the bandwidth inside the top 50 is highly competitive. We are giving away highly competitive opportunities for automatic qualifiers from smaller leagues. Oh, no. And I think that pressure is going to rise as we have more competitive basketball leagues at the top end because of expansion. Oh, so, he's the worst. I'm telling you, he is trying to ruin college athletics. Like he is taking everything that makes all of these sports so fun and completely trying to ruin it for the sake of 18 member schools in his conference. There are over 350 Division I universities, the only ones he care about, cares about. At the expense of the sport itself are those 18 schools under his purview. And it's so maddening. And finally, uh, Dan Wolken from the USA Today, he, tw- he retweeted that story and was like, Greg Sankey is trying to ruin college athletics. Oh. No s***. <laughs> <laughs> So, again, just to spell out, every, in case you didn't pick up on Corey, was that quote that Corey just said. Basically, your Fairley Dickinsons, your Maryland Baltimore counties, your St. Peter's, all the great upsets, all these mid majors, these small schools that make March, March to a large degree, at least those great, that first great weekend of the tournament. He doesn't, they, they don't deserve to be in there because we should try to get Arkansas in this year, even though they're seven games below 500. Yeah, or like because Pitt and Wake. Tough. Yeah. Pitt and Wake both deserve to get in because they went 20 and 13 or oh. 21 and 12. It's like, man, it's like, and, and also what's funny is the first team, when they started the first four, the first team that did a first four to final four run was VCU. Oh, yeah. With Shaka Smart, they yeah. beat Florida State in the Sweet 16. Why isn't that an example? Hmm. We just had an NCAA tournament with Florida Atlantic and San Diego State. Yes. Uh, sorry, a final four yeah. with those two schools. It's just, uh, and, and so that's what Wolken said is like, he will destroy college athletics if they let him. And nobody will curb this guy. Kirk Herbstreet is out there just preaching his message for him in early December, letting him come on the show, ESPN as a whole did, and saying one of these is not like the other. He is just ruining everything that is great about this sport where everybody theoretically has a chance 
He'd rather get rid of – he'd you know, if you're FAMU and you win your tournament, well, now you have to have two play-in games to get into the big dance because, like you said, Arkansas or Kansas State has to get in. It's like you think of – that's what makes it magical, man. Yeah. It's all the – I hate – by the way, I've always hated that the NCAA tournament, those play-in games, will play two 16s against each other. Yep. I hate that, man. Yeah. If you win your conference tournament, you are in the dance. Yep. And Pitt and Wake right now – they would take a play-in game if you gave it to them. Make those play-in games. Nobody even watches <laughs> Prairie TV. View versus Alcorn State. Yeah. But they would watch Pitt versus Kansas State, yeah. these bubble teams that get to actually play their way into the tournament, but let these conference tournament winners into the real tournament. Yeah. I, it just that That's such a dumb idea. And then he triples down on it by saying, maybe these guys that win their conference tournament don't belong at all. Let's just keep it all Power 5. In fact... Why don't we just make the whoever wins the SEC tournament the national champion? And move them and to the we final don't have to four. do anything in March. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The final four of the SEC tournament is everybody's final four now. I'm uh, I'm convinced now. I think he's just angling for Roger Goodell's job. I think this is all just to show himself to be capable of running a private enterprise. I mean, not that these are they're public universities mostly, but it's a private enterprise, a capitalistic one that's extremely lucrative. But I, I think at this point, he just wants to be like, yeah, I, I can I can be the commissioner of the NFL. Like, give me that chance. I will squeeze every stone. I will I will get every dollar out of every corner to maximize your owners, you, your revenues. You do. You do. Maybe. But you do feel like I don't know if it'll make a difference. It probably doesn't. I mean, he's the most powerful man in the sport in college athletics because of the conference he's in, but you do feel like the worm is turning a little bit. In the, the national people that have said nothing are allotted him for making some of these uh, um, changes that he's made or, or you know tried to make. Um, they are now understanding this is preposterous. He's giving his – he wants – they wanted automatic qualifiers. They wanted – if you finish in the top two, you're an automatic qualifier. They wanted that for the college football playoff. They backed off of that, at least – or automatic buys, I'm sorry. Yeah. They backed off of that. They're getting more revenue than everybody else. And now I think this is where he might lose people completely. And they are going to see him for what he is. That's what Wolken said, too, is the I mask hope. is completely off. Yeah. Like, you see him for what he is when he starts talking about not letting conference tournament champions into the NCAA tournament so more SEC and Big Ten schools can get in, which is exactly what he's hoping for. Come on, man. Come on, man. What, what, why, don't ruin the only good thing left about men's college basketball. <laughs> yeah. But he doesn't care. He just wants more money uh, for his universities. And that's all, all, all he cares about. Mm. And at the expense of ruining every sport that matters. And it's not like they're struggling right now. They weren't no struggling doubt. eight years ago either, uh, but they continually want to take more and more and more. Yep. MyBookie.ag promo code is WarChant. When you sign up for the first time at MyBookie.ag using WarChant, you get an instant cash deposit bonus. Pretty cool, right? Lots of stuff going on over at MyBookie these days. NBA odds, NHL odds, ATP, that's tennis. WTA, that's women's tennis. Players Championship. I didn't even realize the Players Championship's going down this weekend. Who'd have thunk it? UEFA Europa League also available. Even Major League Baseball? Yeah. Futures. Got to get on the futures train. March Madness, right around the horizon. They'll have lines for that. Currently, they've got conference tournament odds to win. Some of this stuff might be moot by the time you hear it. Teams might be eliminated. But North Carolina, plus 145 to win the ACC tournament in D.C. Duke, plus 160. The American, that's on the board. Uh, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, a.k.a. the MEAC, that's on the board. How about the MAC, the Mid-American Conference? That, too, on the board. You can bet anything, anytime, anywhere over at mybookie.ag. Promo code again, WARCHANT. Promo requires $50 minimum deposit and rollover requirement of one-time or deposit total, including bonus for withdrawal. For full terms and conditions, visit mybookie.ag slash about-us. On the way out, I don't know if it's going to be a really important weekend for Florida State baseball. They do start ACC play, but the softball team is 17-6, and six core. They lost to Alabama on Wednesday. Yeah. They play number four Duke uh, in Tallahassee this weekend. Will this will this be a line in the sand for Coach Alameda uh, and the softball team? I mean, again, they got they have six losses right now. Um, Duke is number four in the country. Yeah, they are. They okay, are. Duke. All right. Um, I mean, golly, you know, since 2014, she's probably averaged I don't know, like nine maybe losses in a season. They already are up at six right now. Not panicking, but 
man, if there's ever a time to, to figure this thing out. I know it's not the an easy opponent, but shoot, at this point, you got to face his head on and get things figured out. It seems like pitching's still a problem. Yeah, I mean, four run. I think they give up two in the first because they always do, and then they give up a two-run homer in the sixth. Uh, otherwise, it was, a, it was a competitive game, and Alabama's good. Not great. It's not a great Alabama team either, but it's good. But look, man, I think you have to, we have to come to uh, – have a come to grips with the fact that uh cat sander cock was a cyborg well that you're gonna have some down years and you know they they might be on the road in the postseason they might not be hosting a regional they might not be hosting a super regional uh, they will make the ncaa tournament they, they have too much offense to not um but they they might be a two seed on the road at alabama or i guess not do because that's a conference but you know what i mean they're going to be an sec school probably is a two seed unless they get much better. But, you know, look, they did lose the best pitcher in school history. Um, I assume anyway. I guess I shouldn't say that. I, I assume she is or was. But uh, you know, they have a lot of talent. It's young talent. You know, they, they you know, they, they, they're still pretty young. They have they have some veteran hitters like Flaherty and Mudge and Kaylee Harding and Edenfield. But a lot of their core is young and unproven. And they're going they're you know, they're you know, they're it's going. It's a steep learning curve right now. Having some growing pains. I think you know. Obviously, this just isn't going to be a year where they're going to make a serious run. It wouldn't appear because they don't have elite pitching. But Danley is only a freshman. Hmm. She had a good outing against whoever it was on Wednesday. Yeah, she did so, good against. Yeah, she she stopped the bleeding. I guess you could say against Alabama. Yeah, and she pitched all right against Alabama, Alabama too. Yeah. So yeah. you got to hope she gets better. When you're the number two recruit in the country, uh, you're supposed to be a star pitcher. That's just how it works, and but maybe not as a freshman. Like that's a big jump. So um, you know, you hope by next year she's your number one. McKenna Reed has been pitching better, so there's a chance they could turn it around. I just don't think the pitching is going to be strong enough. Um, and like you said, they already have six losses, and the parity around this country and this conference, quite frankly, is such that they're going to end with double digit losses. Clearly, yeah. um, so you know, I I think NCAA tournament. You hope they can get a regional bid and host. That those are always fun times. Um, but I, I would be, I would be surprised at this point, just from what we've seen through twenty three games, that they'll be one of the top eight seats in the country and be in line for a super regional hosting. Yeah. But hey, all that mojo from softball has switched over to Dick Hauser Stadium. My man, yeah. Where they oh. can't, they don't lose. I'm jinxing it. I'm going to knock on a bunch of wood right here. But uh, yeah, so the maybe the baseball team has taken it over. Yeah, the Irish, the Irish coming in during St. Patrick's Day weekend. I don't know if that's mm. a good thing, bad thing, or we're just taking it right on the chin against them. But yeah, Connor Whitaker will start Sunday. Uh, by the sounds of it, they'll go with Cam Leiter Friday, and then Jamie Arnold back to his Saturday starts. Uh, check out the interview with. Listen, I am not the big inside the baseball guy, but I could listen to Link talk about baseball for thirty minutes nonstop and be totally cool with it. There's a 17 minute interview from his press conference uh, yesterday. Go check that out on our YouTube page. Um, you know, just talking about how great Cam and James Tibbs have been. Um, he's been around a lot of championship teams, and those guys have championship hallmarks. Um, you know, he feels good about where they're at in the bullpen, too. I mean, he, he you know, he, he likes what Dorsey's been able to give them, although, you know, it was a little bit up and down at times in Gainesville. Uh, asked him about whether he thought, you know, because if you look at his. Cr- By the way, I keep saying Dorsey is a freshman. No, he's a you transfer. Gotta correct I think, me yeah. on that. He's I'm sorry. Like, yeah, he's Have you said he's a freshman? I thought he was first keep year. It. Yeah. Well, no, I'm pretty sure I said freshman. Right, I keep saying bad. freshman because he's new. But you know, you'd think I'd understand that. Hey, the transfers are a thing in college sports. So yes, he is a transfer. He's not a freshman. Yeah. Uh, he gave a real sincere answer just about his coaching journey and ending up here. Like I asked him, like, did you think that like, you would just Notre Dame would be the the situation that would get you to Florida State? And he just talked about um, like he never. He dreamt about getting back here, but he never thought like it would all line up. So he's always just been focused on doing the absolute best he can to each place, but admitted that he was, you know, a little bit surprised that they were able to do what they did in Notre Dame in such a short amount of time. But when you see what they did in Notre Dame, what they're doing now, uh, like that's his norm. You know, last year was clearly uh, the anomaly. So they did take on Notre Dame this weekend at Hauser. Uh, and then speaking of Florida State and Alabama, right now, Charlie Krem, I don't know if it's Cream or Krem, but for the women's bracketology, uh, he's got Florida State pegged as an eight seed, taking on Alabama in mm. Iowa City. So, Come and get some, Caitlin Clark. Yeah. That's who's waiting. Come yeah. and get some. So there you go. That's Selection Monday? I think so. I think yeah. they do theirs on Monday. Yeah. It might be late Sunday night, but I feel like they moved them to Mondays. All right. Yeah, I, I remember 
I remember doing that in the the TV business on Monday. We would uh, we we went live from Troy because Troy had won the uh, women's. No, it Sun is Belt. Sunday. Is I'm it? sorry. According to the email we got, it's Sunday at seven thirty. And the the women will host the selection show. Um, I guess watch party mm. at the Tucker Center. It's starting at seven thirty, and the selection show begins at eight p.m. All right. You know what? It's kind of smart because as we've talked about the last week or two or three. Women's basketball right now is as popular as men's basketball. So why would they wait till Monday? More people might be watching that than watch this. Well, that's not true, but they'll get some numbers because you got all these, you know, you got South Carolina, LSU, you've got Caitlin Clark, you've got the girl at USC, Connecticut. Like you've got some real star power. And uh, yeah, you might as well build on that and have it on Sunday night right after 60 minutes. <laughs> Will you watch? I don't, I don't watch the men's selection show if Florida State's not in it. Do you? Um, I usually am like, oh, isn't the selection Sunday going on right now? And I tune in and they're like on the second bracket or whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't watch it with nearly the the intensity or as intently rather as when I know Florida State's in it. But it's listen, I am you know, I do not intelligently speak about basketball on the show, which is a, a major Achilles heel of mine. I apologize, everybody. But I absolutely love that first weekend of the tournament. It's, it is the it's best, yeah. it's the best 48 hours of sports all year. And I'm until it's all guy. just uh sec playing big 10 yeah. Yeah. every game. And the, you know, Belmont will be playing uh Mississippi Valley state and some other conference and some other tournament. The CBI. Yeah. 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 They'll go play in the CBI. That's just golly Sankey. Just the worst. He's a villain. He is an absolute villain, and there'll be documentaries about this 20 years from now about he single-handedly ruined college athletics forever. And what are we going to do? You know, what we are going to do is is talk a lot about football uh, next yeah, time. Yeah, man. So, and we get, uh, we get the coaches on Monday, right? Yeah, man. So I think next week we're back at it five days a week, Corey. Uh, buckle yeah. up, man. Yeah, so yeah. Monday the lunch, and I don't know what we're going to do for Monday's program, but we'll figure out something to talk about on Sunday for your Monday show. But Monday we get – uh, Coach Norvell and everybody practically on staff. I think, you know, Derek Ray's been up there on, during those luncheons, so we yeah. can speak to him as well. Storms, I think, yeah, the whole gang is there. Yeah, and then Tuesday is actually the first day of spring football practice. Correct. And it seems like they're going to be doing, like, what, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday um, mainly? But yes. the, the schedule's up on warchant.com if you want to be there for every single one. But, yeah, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, the first week. All at 4.15, I think, 4.15 start times. Except for Saturday. Saturday's uh, 10 a.m., which that's Ooh. fine. That's fine. Okay. I'll right, live with yeah. that. But yeah, during the during the week, because again, he does it later during the week, or he does spring later on in the day because school is in session and he wants, you know, he wants high school players to be able to come watch them and high school coaches to be able to come watch yeah. them practice. So that's why he does spring late in the day and then fall in the morning so they can kind of buckle down. But they'll have their first scrimmage Thursday the 28th. That'll be closed. Uh, but we will be able to speak to Coach Norvell and some of the coaches after that as well. So, um, yeah, man, spring football. We made it, everybody. Get happy. And then the 20th is the spring game. And then what? I think the 19th, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff Cameron, April. Warchant. April. April, sorry, April. Uh, Jeff Cameron, Warchant.com, charity golf tournament, I'm thinking, on Friday. Look, man, w hey, why would they tell us? <laughs> why would we be in the know? Hey, we, hey w show up if you want. Basically, I think it's actually April twelfth. I think it's the okay. Friday before. Oh yeah, like you're eight right. Days before you're the right. spring game. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I think I think Tom we're mentioned on, that we're at on your, a need to know basis. He mentioned that at your wedding. Uh, I think. Oh, I'm there you go. Nice. Uh, I do know Jeff Cameron show returns later today, one to three o'clock. Lots for him to talk about baseball, basketball, football. So tune in one to three o'clock live on War Chant TV as well as ninety three three FM. Coach Speak also up and available. That's right on YouTube. Go check that out, kids. Uh, and all the previews are pretty much done, I think, for the the spring football season. But Iron Corbin cranking them out. Read we them up. We got two more. I think we got linebackers okay. that should be up okay. today, and then we'll have a secondary after that. I mean, maybe we break it up into safeties and corners, but I think we'll probably just do one for a secondary. I remember it was always the the I was always like, should we do tight ends separately? I'm like, no, tight ends, receivers combined. I think we did them. Separately this time. We did. Yeah, because I yeah. overachieves. That's what he does. Well, that's what he does. Yep. That's yep. why I'm a three star. He's a five star. That's right. We're done, everybody. Thanks for listening to another week of Wake Up War Champ presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.